In this video we're going to look into texture painting techniques for virtual restoration of digital objects. So in what way can this be useful for virtual restoration projects? Well first for instance uh, we can restore original paint layers uh, such as these that have been faded to reconstruct how the object originally looked like. We can fix up some uh, previous restorations such as these uh, which uh, of this object has been put together at some point uh, the cracks still being visible um, and we can also fix up these areas for instance that didn't come out of the texture baking uh, entirely properly because these were originally gaps in the in the model and at the end of the video I'm also going to demonstrate a technique to make a slider that allows you to fade between original and the reconstruction. So let's get started. The first thing you need to do is to set up the interface of Blender properly to work with texture painting. Um, there are two options as is usual. Uh, you can use one of the prepared workbenches so the texture paint one over here will automatically prepare your scene for texture painting um, I generally prefer to modify it myself uh, I generally stay in the layout uh, tab over here and just modify this window um, so the first thing I do I go to the corner of this one and I drag a new panel over here and then I'm selecting this to be the shader editor so you will be able to uh, edit the material and then I want another window in which I show the um, texture itself that we're going to paint on so when I'm focusing on painting I will reduce the size of these windows like so and when I need these uh, two windows, I will simply increase their uh, uh, size. So to start texture painting in Blender, uh, you can go here and change the mode from object mode to texture paint mode. And basically then you're set up to texture paint on top of the object or you can texture paint like so or you can texture paint on the texture over here um, so I turn off display texture paint UV so they're not in the way make sure that paint is active and now I can also paint over here so that came up on the back side of the object um, I will remove these edits because one important thing I do want to preserve the original texture so I need to work on a copy of this texture to make my restoration um, so to do that we go to the folder that contains the texture ctrl C ctrl V to copy it and I like to rename it to something like um, underscore painted for now at least so now I have two textures they're the same on, uh, the only difference is the name and then I have to make sure that this texture is also loaded in the material so I can start painting on it I will simply disconnect this one from the object so how do I load a new texture the old and the new texture both uh, in the folder uh, and there's a simple method of drag and dropping it over here so now I have another texture node that was created for me containing the one that's called painted so if I connect those, that one it will display me the texture but now I'm working on a copy okay so that's done now we can get to paint on it so it's important also to make sure that you are actually painting on 
that's texture. At the right side uh, of your window at the top tab, it's called tool, that's a basically the tool properties. Um, you can select the texture that you're actually painting on. So when I have this one selected, I will paint on the original texture, the one that I don't want to modify. If I have this one selected, then uh, I will paint on the one that I want to modify. So this is important to take notice that you're actually painting on the correct texture. Sometimes you have multiple textures uh, associated with your material, not only color, but also, for instance, roughness. Uh, and that you want to paint on the roughness texture rather than on the color texture. So that is possible here to switch between those. So on the left side, there's the painting toolbar. So the top one is called draw and basically allows you to draw on top of the object. So like this. Um, on top there are the paint settings or your brush. Uh, settings so you can change the radius or the size of the brush however it is easier to use the F shortcut on your keyboard F and then you quickly change the radius of your paint brush next the radius is strength which dictates how strong uh, the brush is so in this case uh, the strength is at one so it completely replaces the underlying texture however when I reduce the strength it will just add a little bit on it and it will not replace all the pixels of the underlying texture so this is something that you can use effectively to have more subtle effects um, over here are some additional uh, ones so um, this one may be useful so the stroke method space is the default one it's simply like you're painting uh, or drawing with like you're painting with a real brush or a pencil um, you can choose others so line is sometimes useful if you want to create straight lines I mean there are many straight lines here that you may want to draw over so like this and it will simply draw a straight line Another pretty useful one is a stabilized stroke that allows you to kind of draw more stable lines. It's especially useful when you're using a mouse. So this one, as you can see, it will be less jiggly. And I'm able to create more smooth drawings. Next to uh, stroke is also fall off, um, which is basically how quickly the, mm, the influence of the brush reduces. So does it go smoothly from the center to the side, like becoming less uh, of a clear effect or does it have a radical drop off? So for instance, when I have a constant one and I start painting, I will get very sharp edges and when I choose smooth I will get very smooth edges you will see that it has a smooth transition so the most important part of texture painting of course the color of the brush that you're using well the color can be chosen here at the color picker wheel so you can choose any color that you like or you can choose a color that is already present on the object using the eyedropper tool. So when I select a color like so, this color that was underneath my mouse is now in my paint, um, yeah, in my, in my brush. So I can now use that color to cover the entire area. So if you sampled a color that you want to store for later use and you want to move to another color temporarily, uh, you have to refer to the side panel. So the top one has most of the most commonly used um, settings for the for the brushes. And here on the side, there are some additional settings. So over here, go underneath brush settings. You will find a, a small section called color palette. And with the color palette, you can basically store these colors. So when it, 
you start out you have no color play attached to it but i'd recommend to start a new one and there are no colors associated with this color play but to add the current selected color to the color play i simply have to and i will move my face a little bit to the side in order for you to make it better visible i can use this plus icon and it creates a new color so when i sample another color from elsewhere on this painting and i edit i can now switch between these colors and i can of course add as many colors as i like and i can also uh, for instance modify the color a little bit and then make it a bit darker more saturated and add that one as well so this way you can create an entire color palette that you, that you can use in your uh, restoration um, so these colors of course create like a, a single surface with the same color like so In some cases, this may be exactly what you're after because you want to make a full restoration of how this uh, hair cuff originally looked like. Um, other situations, you might want to use the natural variability in shades that you can observe in this uh, paint. So it's a little bit more damaged in certain areas. Maybe it's also the effect of the way that the artist uses the brush. Well, in those cases, you may want to use the clone tool so the clone uh, tool is over here on the left side in the tool bar so the clone tool allows you to clone certain sections of your painting so you first have to select uh, an area that you want to clone from so uh, I want to use this, for instance, to fill up these seams that are remains of an older restoration. So I shift right click to position the 3D cursor here. So this is another use for the 3D cursor. So now the brush will use the area underneath the 3D cursor to fill the area over here. As you can see, I will move it a little bit here so it makes a little bit more sense. However, when I'm moving the brush, it actually also moves the 3D cursor uh, in the same direction. So when I'm moving over here, it changes color because the 3D cursor is also moved um, together with the movement of my brush. So for instance, when I put the 3D cursor here and I start painting uh, over here, at some point I will simply enter the reddish area of the hairdo. So this allows you to basically copy entire areas of the texture to another area of the texture. There are a couple of more brushes here in the toolbar that I haven't discussed so far. So the soften brush, uh, it does exactly what it uh, says. It softens edges a little bit or uh, and makes transitions a little bit more smooth. So of course, there are some additional tools here that you can use. So one of them is called soften and it does exactly what it says. Um, so you can use it to soften the edges of brush strokes that you have created so for instance these are a little bit too harsh if you compare it to the overall picture so i want to soften these a little bit to make transitions less harsh to make them more seamlessly integrate with the remainder of the texture uh, then there's the smear one which is basically more something like you push the pixels a little bit like if I do it like so and then there's also a fill so this basically fills the entire area so if I click here and then it will take a while 
yeah so it simply fills the entire object with the same color so you won't use it that often for this kind of work so there are other ways to use texture painting aside from using it to reconstruct or restore original colors on an object you can also use it to annotate your object in that sense it's an additional annotation technique um, you can use it to present your visual analysis, uh, identifying certain areas uh, using a color-coded system. Um, or in this case, we can use it to fix up some of this, um, yeah, these holes that didn't come out of the texture baking very nicely. One way would, of course, be fill these holes using the clone brush with uh, similar colors that are found uh, around them so you cannot see that there were holes in the original scanned object anymore however uh, i would prefer to kind of make it clear that this is reconstructed uh, data uh, reconstructed surface data and give them a single color so in that case i can simply uh, select my color and um, make them something dark blue Make sure that you have the right um, texture selected over here and uh, simply start painting uh, in them. I mean, clearly this is just for demonstration. Uh, it's not that important in this case to do this uh, because also in the complete object the restored object these areas will be covered and not visible nonetheless it's just a demonstration that you don't have to use realistic colors to paint on the surface that they can serve different purposes such as uh, annotating the object so now for the last bit of this tutorial vi video, the slider that allows you to, to transition between original documented surface and your virtual restoration. So for this, we need this window, the shader editor. So the shader editor, as you already know, uh, allows you to connect textures to a shader node uh, to display it on the object uh, you can combine multiple textures in the shader node in order to create all kinds of interesting effects and one of these is making a transition slider so what do we need so we first need a another node in between here um, that allows you to choose between this one and that one and i hit shift a on the keyboard then color mix color so this is a mix color node allows you to attach two different colors with it so i connect the original one uh, on the top the a input and the painted one on the b input and now uh, they are mixed so 50 50 so you see a little bit of the of the reconstruction um, and with the factor this one you basically determine how much of each you want to show so when I move this slider to the right it completely shows me the bottom one and when I move this slider all the way to the left it shows me the top one and this is how you very quickly create a slider that allows you to transition between original surface and restored surface.